Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Marina Bill, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Ericsson and ABB partnerships. I'm going live here from Zurich. That is a very snowy day today. So the ABB and uh, Ericsson partnership, I'll talk about that in general and also specifically when it comes to the robotic parts of ABB. This was a partnership that started several years ago and started mainly on research, developed into innovation and is now really looking upon joint solutions for our common customers. And in 2019, we signed the official strategic partnership and the aim of that was really to accelerate the industrial ecosystem for flexible and wireless automation. And what we are expecting from them is then enhanced connected solutions, IoT, and really to go through this digital transformation into the factory of the future. The partnership is based on four pillars. Works is the strategic research where we're working together and we're also actively together in several EU projects, especially in the area of 5G. The India intelligent factory automation where we're actually using each other's technology and equipment in our respective factories. The customer value creation, um, and here we have just recently, as one part of the Global Strategic Partnership, just signed an MOU in Thailand, and we hope to have more of these ones around the world to come, where we're looking upon how we can do connectivity for specific segments, such as gas, oil, and mining. And here we're looking upon the global connectivity, like Osa talked a bit before, where we're trying to have our motors and drives being natively connected. So we have immediate access to the data and can then starting to work with the data and get more, more insights. The fourth pillar is the industrial innovation and communication to really help the whole industry and ecosystem to see the benefit of industrial connectivity. Now looking a bit into the partnership, particularly from a robotics point of view. And of course, we see all the advantages with wireless. Uh, but what is really this meaning for robotics? Well, to connect the robot over the cloud basically means that we can have a much, much higher speed. We can get the data much quicker. We can have larger parts of data, the volume, and we can also offer, especially our manufacturing customer, a more scalable solution. The speed then for our customer that installs our robots means that they can do much, much quicker decision making. And that means really real time decision making, which increase the efficiency in manufacturing. To not having to have wires anymore makes, makes that the manufacturing can be wireless and with that also a much, much more flexible setup of the sites. Scalability to really share network between different applications and to manage the high density of different devices. And finally, productivity, making sure that the process data without building up a new infrastructure can be gathered and that we can use this in algorithms into machine learning and with that really getting insights on how the process is working in the manufacturing to avoid downtimes or limit downtimes and really increase the quality in production. And this is valid with 4G solutions, but of course the, the whole part really comes together in the 5G solutions. So look upon robotics and where robotics are being used most traditionally, probably some of these pictures is what people's minds come up with. It's using it in applications such as welding, painting, assembly, pick and place, palletizing, machine tending and alike. And it's very often used in car manufacturers, painting a car, um, putting uh, welding equipment, moving food and beverage, and so on. So these are some of the more traditional parts that we used to see robots in. Now, before looking into the future, let's look back a little bit what has happened in this automation area in the last decade, because it's been truly a large journey that has been going on. And if we look upon the number of robots installed. And if you just look back since 2009, and this is number of um, of thousand units of industrial robots. And in 2009, you have about 60,000. Last year in 2019, it was 381,000 new industrial robots being installed all around the world. This means that there is now about 2.7 million robots out in the world. Two thirds of these ones are installed in Asia. And if you look upon it from a segment point of view, uh, industries, traditional industries as automotive, about 28% is there. Electronics is about 24%, but then followed by metals and machinery, 12%, plastic and chemicals, 5%, and food and beverage, 3%. So it's a big spread in a lot of different segments. If we then look 
a little bit about how the how the um, more mature automotive segment has continued to develop. And as you can see, it's more and more robots in the automotive sector. But what you can see with the black arrows is that all the other segments, and also looking back for the last 10 years, how that starting from 2015 and 16 has more or less exploded. There is a lot of new segments starting to use automation that didn't do it before. It's in food and beverage, in retail, in logistics, uh, in healthcare, and there is more and more segments for every year when this is being measured. Looking into the two main segments, currently then automotive and electronics, and here you can also see an interesting trend that electronics used to be very often a third of the automotive market, but the latest year they are more almost on pair. So the same amount of robots being installed in these two industries. If we look upon it from a geographical point of view, the five largest countries, uh, the largest countries who have most robots installed actually correspond to about 73% of all the robots installed. And that's China, Japan, US, Korea, and Germany. But another way to look upon how, how the automation is spreading around the world is to look upon the density of robots. And that is robots installed per 10,000 employees. And um, if we would have look upon how this has been developed now the last 10 years, you would have seen this red dots growing from very small to very big. And today, the world average is now about 113 robots per 10,000 employees. Um, in Europe, it's about 114. In uh, America, it's about 108. And in Asia, it's about 118. But you see countries like Singapore, where there's over 900 robots per 10,000 employees. And here I'm just showing the 20 top countries. Today, we know that there are robots more or less in all countries, but these are the 20 top countries. So out of these 20 countries, about 12 of them are actually in, in Europe. So what we can see as a conclusion of this is what has happened the last 10 years. It has been a massive rollout of automation and uses of automation and robots. And it's also getting into new segments. And every year there's more or less a new segment who starts its automation process. It's getting into new geographies, new countries, and the countries who have already installed a lot of robots continues to increase their density. And also, and very interesting, it's, it's not only the large companies, the large manufacturing sites anymore. It is everything from large automotive down to a small bakery uh, company who is using robots and automation to improve their operation and their productivity. So if we look upon, oops, let's see if we go to the next slide. Um, if we look upon the mega trends that we're seeing in the industry today, that is driving this development and pushing automation even further. It's very much the individualized customer. So that means you and me who wants our things in a very special way and really have want to have it personalized. And that is a trend that we're also seeing going to the roof at the moment. Digitalization, having the po possibility to use all the data and being connected. Labor shortage, and this is also something that we see much, much more becoming a reality. Um, there is a labor shortage today, and just look upon that in 2030, a quarter of the Chinese population will be over 60. And if we take the same number for Europe, it's about a third. And then the uncertainty in the world. And we used to talk about trade wars and, and um, natural disaster. But in this year, we are, of course, also adding the pandemic. The pandemic has shown out how extremely important it is that mission critical production is kept up even in situations like this one. So these four megatrends that has been pushing this this trend over the last year, we have seen that they have not changed due to COVID, but they have been accelerated due to COVID. So we see the, the um, trends going even quicker. And what the manufacturing then needs is productivity and quality. And in order to have that, it needs to be flexible and it needs to be simple. The ease of use is becoming more and more important in the manufacturing sector here. So if we looked a little bit about what we traditionally see robots doing and seeing with this trend and this development, some of things that 
robots are doing more recently. And here you just have a few examples that I've put. One is uh, robots being able to um, test ATM machines. An ATM machine needs to be tested a long time with the cards to see that it's really working, a perfect work for a robot. We have lots of different examples of in the healthcare sector, and especially in automating laboratories, Sweden, in China, in Singapore, automated COVID uh, testing and alike to really put automation in this part and in this industry. A lot of different solution for logistic, everything from the big warehouses that is also exploding now a lot due to also all of us in the e-commerce, but also smaller um, solutions for that. And in retail, you have robots scooping ice cream and also doing fries today. So another example of how many new segments is looking into the automation. And Really here, the industrial connectivity is really a vital role for this development to continue and for this trend to continue to go even quicker. So the high reliability, really to be able also to have that without cables, the high security, safety is really primary part in manufacturing. The low latency, which is the prerequisite to really having real-time decision-making, and then the high throughput with all the volume of data coming in. So real-time decisions can be done, and with that we can start doing much, much more advanced opt optimization. We can secure that the workplace is really safe, and also the reliability can be ensured by better productability, and knowing more about the process and knowing it really in real time. So we are not only talking about our partnership and what to do together and research, but we are also using each other's technology, as I said in the beginning, in each other's factory, which meaning that there are robots in the factories in the US and, and in, in Baltics where the 5G equipment is being done. And we in ABB is using increased and better communication in our factories and on our sites. So we are very excited about this partnership and we're excited how we will continue to develop it for our customers and also all the new innovations that we will see coming up in the world now of automation and connectivity. Thank you very much.